Hello, and welcome to Hot Takes. Today it's a little lonely because Jason and HB couldn't be here, but you got me, Reese, the marketing guru, and... Hello, Nelson, founding engineer. <laughs> <laughs> that was smooth. I liked that. <laughs> so today, Nelson and I are going to react to a very exciting and long overdue announcement in the security industry, but also just consumer experience, I guess. Pass keys. They're here. And I'm pissed that we at Beyond Identity didn't come up with that name first. So, Do I mean, I feel like... believe how good it is? It's so good. Password, Right private key. It's a portmanteau. And I, I just love that. I just love it so much. But yeah, I'm mad that I didn't think of it first. That's fine. Um, so Nelson, I feel like this has been a long time coming. It's long overdue. What was your reaction to this news? So the funny thing is, Apple kind of showed their hand last year at WWC with it. And uh, oh, yeah? they said pass keys were going to be the their implementation of a platform authenticator. Um, they didn't give much details into how it's going to actually do roaming authentication and if they're going to have them on multiple devices or if you're going to create one per device and try to figure that part out. But um, yeah, and I think it's it's finally getting to a point where they're all going to come up with their own version of it and Google will have pass keys and Microsoft will have pass keys. It'll be interesting. So when Apple kind of did that, low key ooh, pass key thing a year ago do you remember there being a reaction or a buzz on twitter or was it just apple saying a buzzword and then like moving on to the next cool very thing? subdued i think it, there was some tweeting and the people in the apple ecosystem were like oh cool let me go play with this thing but yeah, yeah. i don't remember a big uh to do like like this year and um i think google also had a a announcement uh or talk about pass keys at Google I.O. this year, which compounds. I didn't see any anything from Microsoft, but I know they've been working on it too. So Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's not surprising at all that Microsoft, Google, and Apple are the ones that are, you know, uh, kind of charging through the darkness into a bright new future. Um, you know, we are as well for what it's worth. But you know, what do you think about the big tech overlords? being the ones to herald us into this new era. Do you think that it's just going to be like a, a monopoly and their narrow use of the technology in a consumer space? How do you see others, you know, interpreting this moment in history? Because it is historic. What do you think this means for people in their everyday lives? Oh, well, if, if HB was here, <laughs> I think he'd, he'd say something uh, to the effect of, you know, Pass keys just you're just about maximizing usability of cryptographic identities. Yeah. And and however you can do that and not use shared secrets, it's it's just good for everybody. Um, but then if you just end up anchoring that on on just big tech and closed ecosystems, uh, that's just going to be largely incompatible with what companies are trying to do. If you yeah. have a fleet of Macs and a fleet of Windows and Android and iOS devices. Does it really serve you well if everybody has its own implementation of the same thing? Um, and then the, the usability aspect of that. If I'm trying to log into a Google Chrome on Windows, um, an app that's running there, and all I have is an iPhone, can I really come up with a better way that's just not scanning a QR code is there a way to make those things work together? Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, most people tend to get locked into ecosystems, right? I have my Apple Watch, my iPad, my Mac, and my iPhone. But I think there are also people out there, especially technologists, they have different devices run rate, running on different operating systems. And, you know, a lot of people will work from a PC but have an iPhone. Um, and I, I see that, you know having some complexity be introduced. Maybe those big three providers will find a way to play nice with each other. I doubt it. That just seems fundamentally un-American to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and kind of like what you were saying earlier, like it, it seems to be very much a thing for consumers logging into applications to help them live their lives. But in a work context, I, I just feel like password management 
is so much harder and more unideal because it has to be stricter. You have to protect your cloud apps and resources. You have to make sure that the right person is getting to the right thing from the right device, blah, blah, blah. And I just don't really see this announcement of passkeys a la Google and Apple doing much to solve that. And I feel like if we're really going to lead a revolution, it has to be comprehensive. It has to be every second of your life, not just when you know, you get off of work and you order some food off of Seamless to your tiny New York apartment. I'm not saying you have a tiny apartment, Nelson. I'm just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being like, you know, creating a narrative here. Um, and, and I feel like, you know, not to brag, but I feel like that's something we're working towards at Beyond Identity. We're thinking about people in all aspects of life. We're thinking about developers too. And just trying to get rid of that terrible password experience you know, we're definitely going to use the word passkey to describe what we're doing. And, you know, how do you see us fitting into this larger narrative? You know, it's so easy to focus on the big, those big three providers, but, you know, I, I think that we're doing something important that's being neglected. And as somebody who's building for us, like what, how does that make you feel at this point in history? I'd be proud. <laughs> yeah. But I, I kind of love, the, the focus that it's, it's this announcement and, and the whole passkeys thing is bringing into just authentication using different primitives. Um, yeah. The, I think shared secrets are clearly not the way to do authentication anymore. No way. And if you have, if you have interest in communities of, that are building towards authentication with different primitives, like public private key pairs, then that's just going to spill into every aspect of not, not only consumer experience, but also enterprise. So that's really good. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we get to a place where we're not locked into huge silos and then our credentials are non movable, not because it's technically impossible to do, but because someone decided that we're just going to build for our thing and, and not let it, anybody else use it. That just, that will be a sad place to be. Yeah, um, at that and, point, it's kind of like, well, what's the point of this revolution if it doesn't touch every aspect of my life and make that easier? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully so, someone builds enterprise-grade passkeys, right, uh, yeah. and consumer-grade passkeys, and make sure they provide an experience that anybody just is focused on, on, on uh, user experience. It uses those cryptographic identities, but um, it's just the, the custody of the credential is – on your devices, no matter which device that is. Yeah, that's like real ownership. And it takes the whole idea of a, a digital wallet to the next level. You know, like Fido has existed for a while. Why do you think it took this long? I mean, if I worked at Fido, I'd, I'd be feeling pretty validated right now. Um, but it just, it just kind of, maybe it's because we're working in this space. It, it befuddles me that others haven't caught on or thought about this. And yay, it's good to see the brands that everybody knows and loves doing it. But like, are you surprised by how long it took to get here? Cause I am, these standards have been around for a long time. Yeah. But standards take, take a long time to, for people to pay attention. I think mm, it's, yeah. it's been what, seven, eight years since Fido um, has been doing web Authen and first um, uh, U2A and then became web Authen and, and CTAB and, Three or four years since WebAuthn and CTAP have been full blown standards. It's just, I think it's a matter of people paying attention and companies yeah. like these getting behind it and, and showing with their marketing and, and their support on browsers and, and application SDKs that you can use them. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a fun time to be in authentication, I think. It is. It is. I feel like I am at the gold rush. Um, so, you know, it, it's taken a while for those to get adopted. Do you think there's a lag now? You know, these companies have gone out with a big marketing splash. Okay, we're going to do this thing. Like how long, what's your timeline in terms of people actually using this technology? Because I had expected, oh, great, the announcement was made. Where's a little pop-up on my iPhone that's going to let me start using this? And it's not there. And I know that was mentioned at the Worldwide Developer Conference. So, I, of course, there'd be a lag. But how long do you think the lag is going to be exactly? Early adopter developers, the, the kind of folks that watch WWDC and Google I.O., um, yeah. those, 
people are going to start playing with it immediately immediately um it's so interesting and then i think it's gonna be a couple of years before it makes it into consumer apps just because mm. it has to go through the normal cycle of adoption and uh product understanding what it is and how to use it and what the benefits are and um it, it's gonna be i think a couple of years but hopefully in those two years the the technology mat matures enough that you're not forced to just build for each platform and you have yeah. someone that can give you a better way to cover everything i wonder who that would be i feel like the name starts with beyond hint hint hmm. okay so let's close out this episode with a fun game pretend that you have to come up with a name for pass keys but you can't say pass key so i'll come up with mine um <laughs> wallet key <laughs> what's your name for it nelson oh man putting me on the spot um what about <laughs> what about digital key i uh, it's Ooh. very creative no digi key i like oh digi wait key. that sounds a lot like yubi key but it's cute it's oh it's a little yeah. digi key okay yeah. nelson you know i better watch out you might steal my job in marketing i think you've got a bright no future way. there <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for your perspective on all things past keys. It's, it's an exciting time for us and everybody else, I think. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds. So if you guys liked this episode, let us know in the comments, like and subscribe. Or if you hated it, please let us know too. Thanks, everybody.